Good morning, everyone. Brad and I are heading out to Ibai today. It's just a 13-minute flight out there, and it's 11% slope. It's a pretty cool runway out there, so you guys will see it. If you haven't seen it already, they had a lot of rain yesterday, so more than likely it's probably going to be slippery today when we get out there. But overall, it looks like it's nice weather. Those clouds down there just like materialized out of nothing over the past 20 minutes. I don't remember seeing all those. Nope. Be coming up from the valley. Hey guys, before we get going, I need to let you know of a free aviation product giveaway. It's only for the month of June. Check out the link down below. You don't want to miss out. Grove Tower, good morning. Over from Zulu, request taxi I buy 3 POV. Good morning. A taxi for only one seven left and back track lineup. QNH one zero one nine. Time check zero eight. One zero one nine zero eight and taxi for only one seven left and back track enter lineup one seven left. No over taking through there. Right, switches and instruments are done. We'll just do trim and board. I've already got my trim set up. For those of you that have just gotten like the SimWorks Kodiak for Microsoft Flight Sim, there was lots of question whether or not you actually need like all of the rudder that it needs in the in the game. And yes, you do. We take off with like full right rudder trim, and then almost all the way nose over trim. This is the Kodiak version one, and I think from what I've heard that they've made some adjustments since then on the real airplane on different versions, but in this plane. We have to do that. Otherwise, it's just such a pain to take off. You have to just drag the brake just to stay straight until you get going. So lights on. Or we'll be um, 50 knots by our taxiway that we just pulled out, or we'll just stop on the runway if we're not, because there's obviously something wrong. After takeoff, um, if we had an engine rollback or anomaly or whatever, I'm going to consider my EPL, pitch for 85 knots, consider feather. We'll be going straight ahead, finding the best option that we can. And if those don't work, then we'll cut off, pull off, and shut off. 85, then 84 flaps. Pull up tower, crack our door, brace. Ignition. And lights are good. Furnaces 21. November Tango Zulu ready for departure. Condition flaps 20 fuel and hard. Over Tango Zulu, morning land, make a right turn, clear for takeoff. Morning land, right, clear for takeoff, right turn, over Tango Zulu. There we go, 1390 for 1440 on the torque, rotate 60. All right, airspeed's alive, torque set, ITT 727. There's 50 continuing. There's 60 and rotate. YITT back just a tiny bit. Go. Initially, I'll just pitch for about 85 knots climbing out of here. Brad and I did some testing with this, what was it, maybe a month ago? Regarding climbing out at VY which is, well, 87 knots, I think, with 20 degrees, as opposed to VX, which is 73 knots. And it took, and we were, like, right on the controls. We basically just went idle. We are obviously high enough. But we just went idle when we had 20 degrees of flaps um, with 73 knots. And it took us 500 feet to basically get up to 85 knots of just falling, basically, before you were at a speed that you could do any kind of rotating back to the ground without just smacking the ground. And then 85 knots was 300 feet before we could get to a speed that we could correct ourselves or at least flare before smacking the ground. Pull the prop on back to 2,000. Anyway, it was interesting just to try it out for ourselves. Just so that we know, is it better to climb out at 73? Is it better to climb out at 85? In case there was an emergency, in case your engine crapped out on you, what's your, what's your best scenario for actually walking away from it? Stroke Tower, November Tango, Zulu, departed time 1-2, tracking 240 on climb, not above 8,000, estimating I buy 25. 
Tau Matengo Zulu Copidol, contact uh, Mosby on HF 65908 or 38. And no contact, 1201 at 15 miles. 15 miles, 659838 or 12018 Zulu. We've got time this afternoon, you want to go as busy rated? Yeah, that'd be a great idea. We're nearly up to 7,000. Let me throw my autopilot on. Bring out the strip chart for I-by. And bring our torque back to 1250. So if you bring it back to 1270 and let it sit there for a second, it usually evens itself out right at 1250 or really close to. This is Zulu, and we've been noticing the past couple of days we've been flying it. It is tending to like kind of just creep a little bit. Let's get it off. Autopilot. All right, you want to look through that and brief it? How you would brief it if you're going there? 54 meters, 11 person slope. Left hand circuit, it's runway 23 for landing. Okay. Elevation 6,450. 6,450. So I think we have to set up my minimums um, at 6850 because I think touchdown was 6350. Look to see if there's a note about that. 6340. Okay, so 6340. So I'm going to come down here just because I know myself at this place I always get low if I don't have this set up. So I'm going to turn it to 6840. Okay. Okay. 6840. That's where we're and turning final. that's where I want to turn final. So if I were to get low at any point and I get to that level, it's going to say minimums, and then I know don't go any lower, even though your natural instinct is to go, I don't look right. And talking not only to Brad, but to you guys too, at places like Ibai that have just this big, huge open valley and you're landing up into a mountain, you really have to go off of your numbers. And that's why I've been drilling Brad to start calling out numbers as we turn final, what his winds are, what his vertical speed is, is because places like this, that's the only thing that's giving you a clear indication that you're on the right a glide slope coming in, basically. If you know you're coming in at 300 feet per minute, you're coming in flat. If you're coming in at seven or 800 feet per minute, you're coming in steep. Morsby, 65 man rate, November Tango Zulu, transfer. Really bumpy and there's a lot of wind up here already. I hope there's not out there. November Tango Zulu, Morsby. Morsby, 6538, November Tango Zulu, 15 miles to the west, Karoka. About about 7,000, estimating I by 23. Yes, I'm estimate uh, I by at 23. Affirmative 23. One zero zero eight. One zero zero eight. No, Set up our main one and our standby. Yeah, if we've already got eleven knots coming this direction, what that a lot of times does is just on the other side of this big hill right in front of us is that cliff. So if the wind's coming this way, hits that cliff, turns back around and turns into a tailwind for our landing, which is. We've got a five-knot tailwind penalty, so that means if this down here indicates that we have more than a five-knot tailwind on landing, then we'll go around and we'll try it again. If it still doesn't work, then we'll just go back. Okay. Um, actually, we're we scheduled for eight thousand, not seven thousand. I was like, I always thought I went over this hill at eight thousand. It's runway two three. I'm gonna hit my OBS now. Turn it over to two three zero. And you can see the little boxes right there. That's the extended center line. Helps you kind of pinpoint where it is on the mountain when you're still 10 miles out and you don't see it. Fuel selectors are good. Our TAWS is turned off. Our VREF, we'll check here in a minute once we get past this hill and these bumps. All right, now the wind should calm on down, at least for bump-wise. He said 6840, 7200 I think was, 7300 is our pattern altitude. Hey, 16 knots of wind over here. And I really do hope it calms down by the time we get up there. 
either that or if it continues this way and it doesn't swirl around. The thing with this is you can see the hill directly in front of us. So you have that hill and then the next hill and it's a kind of a bowl that comes up. So the wind actually like swirls. So you might have a tailwind on landing, but then when you touch down and you get off out of the plane, you'll actually have a headwind coming down so because it just continues all the way around. It's kind of a pain, but... Did you take off with a headwind? Yeah, and then you take off with a headwind. <laughs> so <laughs> That's beneficial at least. Yeah. We're 6410, so 70 knots. I've already got that set in for our V ref. We'll do lights and inlet now. All right, there's the airstrip way over there. If we have to go around, it's going to be a left hand turnout. So we're going to do power up, 20 degrees of flaps, left hand turn, reset our ITT to 740. And we'll try it again. So we've got 15 minutes going back. So let me throw my autopilot on for a second. If we need to go back, 15 minutes times 5.3 plus 320, like plus a 30. So we need to be out of here with 430 pounds of fuel. Maybe a tiny bit less, but um, we're 460. So we've got maybe enough for like one extra circuit like if we can't do it this one we'll do one more time and then we're going back if that's the case got seven knots of headwind now all stations i by one two zero one november tango zulu six miles to the east seven thousand five hundred will be circuit time two three i by little seven knots so if we have a headwind on landing it's fine but I'm going to expect one, two, one, two, zero, one. a downdraft on short final. Just because the end of the runway drops off about 80 feet. So the wind's gonna be coming down the hill and then it just drops off. Okay. So I'm just gonna be mentally ready to be adding any power if I need to right at the end. Which makes this one just more difficult even though it's only 9% on the touchdown. Also, I'm going to fly almost to my spot and then I'm going to look up basically when I'm almost to my spot I'm going to look up about another plane and a half and then start kind of rounding out and flying to that before I do my my flare and pull the power oops I'm getting all low push the prop forward oh, it's a really sticky feeling degrees of flaps we want 70, 80, 90 90 on downwind All right, five knots, still looking like it's gonna be a potential headwind for landing, but it looks like it's dying off the closer we get to the mountain. A couple sprinkles, not much. Looks like the wind sock is also indicating a potential three or four knot headwind on landing. Six, five, three, eight, November Tango Zulu in the circuit, I by report after landing. November Tango Zulu. All stations I by one two zero one. November Tango Zulu is in the circuit I by. All right, the windsock actually is just hanging there limp. I'm at three knots up here, so potentially I'll have zero knots down there. It looks very wet, like standing water in some areas, especially in the parking bay. But about a third of the way up, it just looks very wet, and muddy. So be prepared to slide a bit. If we start sliding a little bit off to the left, then we'll come out of reverse. I come over here, follow along this ridge, and then head over there to turn final at 68.40. Going to 90. I'll hold my 7,040 before turning my base. Uh, reading you likewise, Alpha Tango Romeo, copy 1021. Alpha Go 20 degrees. Alpha okay. uh, Tango Romeo, copy 1021. Request any uh, uh, actual updates for my target. Alpha Tango Romeo. I'm at 80 knots. 
There's my 80 knots. Her feet yet to go. Probably 10 knots across one at this point. Minimums, minimums. No. My altitude for a second. Land about where the dirt starts. Better land about that area. About the first cone in. Full flaps checklist is complete. Going to 70. Five knots headwind. All right, 800 on the descent, a little steep. There you go. Go for about the dirt area. Seven knots headwind. Off to the left. Up on committed, six knots headwind. Except the end of the descent. All right, we're committed. But off to the left. Prepare for a downdraft. 500. Sliding Alpha back and middle, forth, back and forth. Alright, so this parking bay gets really slippery. And it gets really soft, one. too. I'm going to cancel my SAR. Mars V6538, November Tango, Zulu. On the ground, I buy cancel SAR. Look how much standing water is just everywhere. Now there's mud all over my windshield. Beta, so it doesn't pull us down and around. Come on. Yeah, you can do it. There we go. Oh, November Tango Zulu, thanks. Well, guys, if you guys enjoyed that, as always, exciting landing here in Ibai, nice and slippery today, give the video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And go check out some other videos. I've got a bunch of them on here if you guys are interested in more of this kind of stuff. So, see you guys next time. I want to remind you, go check out that link down below to sign up for the free E3 Aviation product giveaway. It's only for this month, completely free. Every time you share the link with one of your friends, you get extra points, completely free. You don't want to miss out.